In this tutorial series, we'll model a realistic 3D head model from scratch using a real reference image. We start off by modeling the eye sockets, adding the nose, the mouth, refining the face details, and finally adding the ears. So by the end of this tutorial series, we'll have a complete head model ready for your portfolio. So let's dive right in. Character modeling is one of the most exciting yet frustrating skills to master, so that's where most beginners struggle. It's easy to end up with those odd proportions, in natural shapes, and spending hours of frustration. But what if I told you that there is a simple step-by-step -step strategy that we can follow to make the process much more easier, especially for beginners? And that's my mission here, is to help you get the first steps right, to create a well-designed character based on any reference image you have. Not just creating the character, but we will use it. We're going to be using the character for making animations and for building a game. A playable game that you can play on both PC and Android. So in this quick introduction, I want to discuss with you the problems that prevent beginners from achieving the good results when modeling a character. And how can we overcome them with our example here, our character that we're going to be designing. So the first mistake is going to be not using the reference images. So many beginners just jump right in without using any reference image. So modeling their character from just from imagination, which lead to incorrect proportions and unnatural shapes. So the key here is to always use reference images. So this ensures accurate proportions and helps maintain consistency throughout the modeling process. So a great place to find reference images is Pinterest. I personally use it not only for gathering references, but also for getting the inspiration. You can also check other sources like the R station for high quality concept art and for character blueprints. Moving on to the second mistake, which is overcomplicating the geometry. So many think that adding more geometry will make their model look better, but in reality, it does the opposite. It makes the model difficult to edit and as a result, bad modeling. So the solution is to simplify your modeling especially on those first or in those early steps. You should always go with the minimum amount of vertices needed. For example, in this case, I removed this edge because it wasn't serving any purpose. And if you notice, without this particular edge, there is no big change that disrupts the geometry or the edge flow of our model. The third mistake when modeling a face is ignoring the face edge loops. So I'm sure you've seen a topology face map like this before. So basically, when modeling a face, if we don't have the proper edge loops around key areas like the eyes, the mouth, and even the overall facial structure, so the face deformations will look unnatural and will break the realism of the face animations later. So that's why we need to have a good face topology that follows the natural movements of the facial muscles. So here at the end of this section, we're going to be checking if our face topology is animation friendly or not. We're going to be using the shape keys to test the facial movements like the eye blinking, smiling, and even talking. So this will ensure that we have a clean face topology. So I'm going to be breaking the process of face modeling into small manageable steps that you can do with ease. So for step one, we're going to start, we're going to begin with the eye edge. So we're going to be simply creating a curved shape that acts like the foundation. So I'm going to be using the example of a ship to make the eye edge easier to create. From there, we're going to be expanding outward, extruding those edges, adding loops one by one to form the eye socket, or as I like to call it, the Zoro mask, because it looks like that mask that Zoro put on his face. Next, we're going to be working on the nose. For the nose, to make it easier to model, I did extrude only two edges, one from the top here and another one from the side. And after that, I merged them together. So then I filled the gap with an inset to form the nose wings. And as you can see, we're going to be ending up with this nice form that contains the eye socket and the nose combined. In step number four, we're going to be modeling the mouth, adding one layer at a time, ensuring proper proportions and shape. And finally, we're going to be completing the face filling in those missing areas of the face with a smooth and natural edge flow. So this approach is going to remove the guesswork and frustration, making it easier for you to model any face with the proper anatomy. So let's go ahead and start modeling our character. 